Hi, Neil. Absolute pleasure to speak with you again, and thank you so much for this talk. Um, something I think you're really great at is the way that you teach. You are so humble, and uh, I've really loved that about you. And I, I'm a public speaker. I run a public speaking academy. And there's, there's a subject at the moment I'm really passionate about, which is about animal rights. And mm -hmm. I know you talk in your books about there's no good or bad or right or wrong, and it's not good or bad to eat animals or not. It's, it's up to you, depending on your perspective and what you want to achieve. My question, first part, and, and there's a follow up to it, is when you're teaching people the things that you believe to be true, do you have some advice on how to do that in a way where you're not pushing? I don't, I believe if you push people, if you tell them they're wrong, then, then they often won't listen. Um, so I'd love to know how you go about educating, particularly people close to me who I would really love to be more healthy. Um, I'd love to know what your advice is on how to help those people uh, or how to communicate with them in a way that might make them more receptive. Well, Luke, uh, let me begin by telling you that I'm not always successful uh, with that. Um, in my personal private life, I'm, I'm almost not as successful with that as much as I'd like to be. But even in my even in my public persona, when I'm I want to say teaching you know, or sharing uh, the messages of conversations with God, even in that arena, I'm not always as successful with that as I'd like to be. I sometimes get to be, I sometimes find myself being very forceful, you know, and very um, direct, let's put it that way, uh, in what it is I want to share. But having said that, I will give myself a little bit of credit. I'm much less uh, uh, that than I was, let's say, 15 or 20 years ago. And, and I have learned to say, you've probably heard me say it here, uh, and you've probably seen it in my writings as well. I have learned to say, um, I could be wrong about all of this. And I'm, I'm sincere when I say that. It's not a, it's not a speaker's you know, tool or a manipulation. I really mean it. I could be wrong about all of this. And I'm, I'm acutely aware of that, by the way. So I, I, I tell my audience that even when I'm being fairly passionate in what I want to get across, I, do, I almost inevitably say I, I could be wrong about this. And I want to return you to your own thought process. Now, how... Uh, to, to find the answer that's, that rings true for you. Now, to answer another aspect of your question, however, I think that there is a way to gently share one's, your point of view with another when you allow them to feel that, not that they're wrong, but that, you know, uh, let me give you a little device. I, I don't think that people are necessarily, I don't hold in my mind that people are necessarily wrong about something simply that they don't have all the information or, the, or that there's some data missing. And that if they, if they had the additional data that I've, I have an opportunity to share with them, then they have a broader base of information from which to allow their own conclusions to arise. So I try when I'm in my best space. And that's usually when I'm being more quiet with people. You know, when I have a, a gentler environment, that's not a small thing, by the way, to consider as well. I have three ways that I talk to people in my life. I mean, with my work. Way number one is in large groups. You know, I just, I just spoke to 1,700 people um, in Basel, in Switzerland, a couple of weeks ago. I was in front of 2,000 people in Paris and like that. So what I, that's one way that I talk to people. A second way I talk to people is in much smaller groups, anywhere from 30 to, you know, 120 or, or less, 80 or 70 people. I tend to be not quite as, as as passionate, I want to say, and forceful when I'm in front of a smaller group. It seems like the energy of the, of the space I'm in kind of feeds the energy that I allow to uh, um, affect me and impact on me. And so I bring, I bring my, um, my own projection down uh, to, to um, equate with the audience that's in front of me. And then the third way I, I talk to people is in very small groups, if not if not one on one. So I talk to people one on one. I do a lot of into individual mentoring. You would never hear me in an individual mentoring session, and I do I do that a lot, by the way. I do six or eight, sometimes a week. 
on the telephone with people in our spiritual mentoring program. And we have one-on-one -on -one, uh, talks, mm -hmm. just that person and me. You'd probably never, ever hear me talk with the kind of passion that you'd hear me talk to a, a large audience with. So uh, what I want to say to you in, in answer to your question, Luke, is pay attention to the harmonics of the, uh, of the, of the room that you're talking to. Uh, and if you, to, to the degree that you can control those energetic harmonics, do whatever you can to control them. I mean, everything from the physical look of the place, whether there are some flowers on stage, whether the seats are comfortable, whether the lighting is, is too glary and, and, or not, uh, whether the sound system is working, you know, all those things that, that can irritate, irritate an audience and for that matter, irritate the speaker. So pay as much attention as you can to those parts of your presentation that you can control. Then feel the room and, and see whether the room really needs to be beaten up verbally you know, to make sure they get it which uh, or, or whether they're already with you before you start talking uh, and they simply want confirmation of what they already believe um, that's that's something i need to pay more attention to myself uh, and it's advice that i would give to you but uh, lastly i think you're perfectly right luke you've nailed it if uh, you said a minute ago that if people feel that they're being made wrong they can't hear you you know, there's an old saying, you're talking so loud, I can't hear you. Uh, and, and I agree with you. I think that's an astute observation. I think that you're profoundly correct. Uh, and if you pay attention to that and use whatever verbal signals that you can conjure to make sure that the people or the person that you're talking to does not feel made wrong, but simply feels better informed. Let better informed replace being made wrong in your presentations and nine times out of ten you'll do okay thank you yeah it's i definitely resonate with what you said there that was really really good i tried something different today for with my family um one of my <laughs> associates they recommended they pay their children 20 pounds for each book that they read about personal development so I offered my sisters today five pounds if they'll watch this documentary which is all about health and um, we'll see how successful that is. <laughs> yeah, I tried. <laughs> I tried. Right. My really works. <laughs> yeah, I tried that technique. Um, but my, my follow-up question, Neil, and you, you talked a little bit about this. So I run a public speaking academy, as I mentioned. We have a lot of aspiring people who are really passionate and they want to share their message with the world. And I've seen your progress. I watched one of your talks on abundance from must have been 20 years ago. It was fantastic. If you were starting out as a speaker now, like what would your advice be to these these aspiring speakers? What would be a way for them to really get themselves out there? Because I saw you speaking at big festivals and things, which is something that I really hope is there for me in the very near future. Um, yeah, what would your advice be for these aspiring speakers? Uh, number one, make sure that you deeply, deeply, deeply believe in what you're saying. Number two, don't be afraid to allow your uh, emotions to be revealed. And, that, and again, I'm not me, I don't mean anger or make wrong emotions, but your, your soft, gentle emotions. I've been known to shed a tear or two on stage. I've been known to sometimes talk uh, very quietly into my microphone and to, and, 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 and to sh shift the, uh, the energetic of the presentation. Uh, and um, so, and, and, the, and then make sure that um, you are clear uh, with regard to the final point that you want to make. Now, let me give you the biggest piece of advice. I used to give a talk, I used to give a speech called How to Give a Good Speech. And I was hired by large organizations, government, or, or government organizations and so forth. They hired me to come in. Uh, this was almost 45 years ago now. But uh, I was hired by organizations to come in and give a speech called how to give a good speech. And the first thing I would do when I got up to give my speech on how to give a good speech is, good morning. I want to share with you that I don't care whether you like my speech today or not. Frankly, to use some raw language, I don't give a damn. Whether you get what I'm here to say or don't get it, I have no investment in the outcome of, of how you respond to what I'm going to say. 
I'm going to share with you what's true for me. I thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to be here with you to share it, but I have no investment in the outcome. So let's get clear about that. Uh, and now let's proceed. And I told people that what the, the what stops people from giving good speeches is nervousness. They're afraid the audience isn't going to get it. They're afraid the audience may not even may not even understand it. Or worse yet, they're afraid the audience will understand it, will get it, but won't agree. That that so they try to please the audience and try to get them to get it, to understand it, and to agree with it. I don't worry about any of those three things. I never have, frankly, when I've given a talk. I don't care whether my audience gets it or not. I'm not concerned with whether they agree with me or not. I'm only concerned. You know, conversations with God said to me something interesting. In conversations with God, it said, it is not nearly so important how well a message is received as it is how well it is sent. And boy, that's what I would tell anybody starting off on a public speaking career. Make sure you're talking about something that's dear and near to your heart, that you truly believe it, that it's important to you, and then let go of any need for your audience to respond in a particular way. Fantastic. And I had no idea that you had a speaking experience before your communications with God. So you were being trained uh, to be a great communicator before you even had your encounters. That's, that's very interesting. Well, my, my friend Luke, I spent 20 years in broadcasting in, in radio and I did some television as well. Uh, and I did a great deal of public speaking. Uh, I was hired to do that. Uh, so, uh, I, yeah, I, I've, had a, I've had a background and a whole career in the communications arts. It's been my whole life since I was 19 years old. Wow. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Neil. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in person very soon. Thank you, Luke.